Uh, good afternoon. As Jeff said, um, I'm a PhD student here at Loughborough University. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about some of the work that I did in my first year, um, a computational study of weight structure and base pressure on a generic SUV model. Um, this is really a stepping stone towards the main theme of my research, which is a fully coupled vehicle dynamics and aerodynamic simulation. So to start with an introduction, uh, the primary objective of automotive aerodynamics, or at least one of the primary objectives, is correct drag prediction. Um, and computationally, there's a direct relationship between the correct flow prediction in the wake and this drag value. The aim of this study in particular is to determine strengths and weaknesses of different turbulence modeling approaches and how the solvers implement these for the flow around a simplified generic SUV model. I'll do this by comparing to experimental data that was obtained in the Loughborough University wind tunnel. Um, it's a fifth scale model. Uh, and finally, as well as flow accuracy, this study will also consider computational cost um, and efficiency. So the computational methodologies that I'll look at are steady state, Reynolds average, Navier-Stokes, um, unsteady, RANS, uh, detached eddy simulation, and finally the lattice Boltzmann method. The solvers that employ these uh, will be CD Adapco, Star CCM Plus, Open Foam, and Excess PowerFlow. And for simplicity, we'll refer to these as general purpose, uh, open source, and then LBM solver. Only one vehicle model was used uh, during this study. Uh, the generic SUV, which can, you, which can be seen in the wind tunnel on the right-hand side there, it's got static wheels, um, fixed ground, so the um, best practices that are obtained from this may only be suitable for similar geometries and similar conditions. So just a, a short background about the model. The generic SUV model um, was designed in the Aeronautical and Automotive Engineering Department at Loughborough University. It was the result of a study conducted by Dan Wood that analyzed trends in the uh, SUV geometric features for SUVs over the last 40 years. Um, and then these trends were extrapolated to predict a generic 2017 model. You can see um, the model on the left-hand side at the top there, along with some of the key dimensions. So as I said before, fifth scale, 5.4% um, blockage when it's in the uh, test section of our tunnel. So the experimental data that was obtained, as I said, um, in the Loughborough University Model Scale Wind Tunnel, there was 2D time average PIB data in six planes in the wake. You can see the locations of these planes here on the right-hand side, three vertical, two horizontal planes. Uh, base and diffuser surface pressures were obtained from tappings in the model, and also aerodynamic forces and moments from a six-component underfloor balance. So this um, has generated a vast array of uh, experimental data, and along with the four um, the four methodologies for computational, we've got um, a huge database. Um, so this is only, what's presented today is only a subset of that. Um, all surface pressures and forces were corrected for blockage using the, the standard Meyer correction, and this was maintained in the computational results as well. So a short background on the CFD methodology. The general purpose and open source codes both use finite volume semi-implicit pressure-based low-speed solvers. For the RANS case, the K-epsilon realizable turbulence model with second order upwind convection scheme was used. The same turbulence model and convection schemes used in the U-RANS, but now we've introduced some time dependency. We've got a time step there, uh, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. DES, we've got a, uh, an order of magnitude smaller on the time step. And then again, for the Latin Boltzmann code, this is due to the, um, the scales of turbulence that we're resolving there. The Latin Boltzmann being similar to a very large eddy simulation um, with K-epsilon RNG model acting as a subgrid scale model. So the CFD procedure, um, the CFD obviously needs a spatial discretization, and for the lattice Boltzmann solver, this is, a la this is known as a lattice. Um, this consists of cubical volume cells, so fixed aspect ratio cells of one. So to achieve a small Y plus value, um, this is obviously going to drive up the total number of cell counts or total number of voxels. Um, and that's resulted in a size of, of uh, approximately 70 million vo voxels. The general purpose and open source codes, they don't have this, this requirement of fixed aspect ratios. Um, so with the introduction of a prism layer, we can achieve a much finer Y plus range um, for approximately the, num the same number um, of volume cells. It's important to mention at this point um, that the general purpose and open source codes uh, used identical meshes. Um, and some of the refinement you can see um, on the top image there for the lattice is also maintained in the general purpose and open source mesh. So we can move on to the results. First, we'll look at the steady state RANs. 
The images that you can see on the screen are planes in the wake. Um, this is the central, the center plane, um, so this plane here, straight down the middle of the wake. Um, flow is moving from left to right. What we're looking at is the normalized X velocity component, so streamwise velocity component. Experiment on the left, general purpose runs in the middle, and then open source runs on the right hand side. So immediately you can see good agreement, especially in this um, low velocity structure here, um, between, all the, between all the codes and with the experiment. The only differences between appear to be restricted um, to the flow emerging from the, the diffuser region, which would be down here, um, in the angularity of that flow and also the speed of that flow. But generally a good agreement with the experiment. If we move out to uh, another vertical plane, so this time um, we're in the furthest right-hand plane directly behind the wheels, we start to see that, that good um, agreement is starting to disappear. Um, the shape of this low velocity structure um, is now, although it's matching between the two computational results, it's being unable to match to the experiment. We believe this is due to a highly transient flow, um, especially in the wake of the wheels. Moving on to the two horizontal planes, so the top three images, uh, the lower of the two horizontal planes, um, we can see that although RANS is being able to capture the shape of those low velocity structures, um, the specific values and the overall size of those structures aren't, um, aren't very accurate when you compare it to the experiment. So this implies that we need to move on to a, a time dependent solver, and this is what we did with URANS. Um, so now we're just comparing for the general purpose uh, solver. We've got URANS, time average URANS has taken place of open source RANS on the right hand side. And immediately you can see an excellent agreement between the two, um, or very little difference, should I say, between the two um, URANS and RANS cases. Um, but this was okay because we started off with a reasonable, um, reasonably accurate flow when you compare the RANS to the experiment. However, where we'd expect to see the difference um, in the plane behind the wheels, we're starting to see that there is no difference whatsoever. Um, and it's, um, the shape of that structure is the same in the RANS and the URANS case. So moving on to DES and the LBM results, a much better agreement, especially um, in this low velocity structure than we saw in the RANS case. Interestingly, differences um, below this structure where we can see the angularity is significantly different across all cases. Um, and it will be appropriate to say at this point that the experiment and the open source appear to agree relatively well. Um, now if we move out to that plane behind the wheels, we can see good agreement now um, in the shape of that structure between all cases and between all, um, all cases to the experiment as well. And this trend is maintained in the horizontal planes. So the shape of that structure, the horseshoe shaped structure that we saw, um, and also in the, the um, higher plane here, much better agreement in the shape and also the contouring in, that, in those structures. So now if we move on to base surface pressures, as we could have expected from the, the flow velocity planes that we saw, general purpose RANs and open source RANs, um, not very accurate when you compare it to the experiment. But then if you compare it to the time average DES and time average LBM, we're seeing much better agreement. Um, difference is really restricted between all the computational results on this diffuser region here, um, but very little difference on the actual base surface itself. Moving on to the force coefficients, um, it's clear that there is a, uh, a direct correlation between the wake flow accuracy and the drag coefficient value that I mentioned in the introduction. Um, DES and LBM showing the most accurate drag values, uh, plus or minus approximately 10 counts. This is a uh, plus or minus from the experimental value. And then if we extract the base, um, the, the contribution of the base surface, um, interestingly, all cases all computational cases appear to be underpredicting um, that base contribution value. If we move on to the lift coefficient, this is where we start to see something different from the trends that we saw before. Um, DES and LBM significantly underpredicting the lift value. Um, I believe this is a common occurrence with lift coefficient, um, and we believe this is due to um, the experimental mounting in the tunnel. Um, the experiment requires a gap between the base of the wheel surface and the floor so that you, you get the full reading on the balance and also a small clearance between the pin connecting the model to the balance and the, whole, and the, uh, and the floor for which the pin travels through. 
Um, and we believe that there's some slight pressure recovery coming um, from the underneath the bar, underneath the uh, wind tunnel test section into that working section, which is causing that um, that low lift value. <coughs> So as I said in the beginning, uh, this study also considers computational cost and efficiency as well as flow field accuracy. So the finite volume codes uh, were run on HPC Midlands facility. This has got processes of 2.2 uh, uh, gigahertz. And the LBM code was run on an industrial facility, slightly higher processor speeds, 2.93 gigahertz. All cases were run on 192 processes. And the normalized solution time plots that we can see below account for those differences in processor speeds, um, assuming perfect scaling. So for the steady state case on the, right, on the left hand side, um, we can see that open source RANS is being computed in approximately 70% of the time for the general purpose case. If we move over to the right hand side, a look at the time dependent solvers, um, DES, general purpose DES being the most expensive, Open source DES, um, approximately 55% of the time to a normalized solution. But probably the most interesting result, um, lattice Boltzmann method, um, being computed in about 50, a sixth, about a sixth, a sixth of the time of the general purpose DES. Um, it should be stated at this point that all cases use the same convergence criteria, um, which was a monitoring of the uh, drag and lift um, coefficients. So just to conclude, um, the RAND solutions show a reasonable prediction of uh, base flow velocity field. This becomes worse the further outboard from the center line we go. Base pressures are too high, resulting in an underprediction of drag. And the URAN solution showed no improvement despite significant increases in computational cost. DES and LBM solutions are a significant improvement. Um, they were given very good agreement with the experimental base flow velocity field and also improved drag coefficients to within 10 counts of the experiment value. There were some small differences observed between the open source and industrial solver for both the RANS and DES, even though identical grids and turbulence models were being used. Little difference between DES and LBM solutions, um, but as we saw in that last slide, the latter being computed in approximately a sixth of the time. And finally, all solutions were significantly under predicting lift um, for the DES and LBM by approximately 100 to 200 counts. And this may be partly due to uh, mounting of the model in the tunnel, um, but this is yet to be yet to be proven. Thank you. And are there any questions? <laughs>